backed by popular demand, including his own, the irrepressible Jackie Mason. It's all right, I can't be a hit with everybody. Some people like you, some don't. You think you could please everybody? Let's be honest about it. I don't care who you are, you cannot please everybody. Like, I have a girlfriend. My girlfriend, to me, is the most wonderful, most remarkable person in the world. That's to me. But to my wife? <laughs> Why do you think President Carter is getting so mad and disturbed about making a moral crusade in this country? And he's right about the immorality that's going on, and he wants to change it. Did you hear what President Carter said? Look how nobody listens to him. <laughs> is he talking to himself lately? I stopped listening to him, too. I've always wondered why makes a guy walk around laughing all the time. <laughs> the conferences are going on all over the world. Pressures and problems are going on all over the world. There's no peace in the Middle East. There's no peace in Asia. There's no peace in Africa. Unemployment is worse than ever. Inflation is going terrible. Everything in the world is in a turmoil. And he keeps laughing. <laughs> I keep wondering, maybe he don't know that he got the job. I got news for you. That's a strategy. That's how he beat Ford in those debates. Remember those debates? Ford was firm and definite, and he kept laughing. And Ford was going crazy, wondering, what's the joke? I lost my place. <laughs> he's a brilliant man, Ford. He, I, <laughs> but he's not as brilliant as Carter, because Carter knows how to run a campaign. He's on both sides of every question. Whatever you want, he said, you could have it. How about this? You could have that, too. <laughs> I'm still waiting for that $50 rebate that he promised me. Remember that campaign? During that campaign, he promised everything to everybody. He promised so much, I heard a rumor that Ford voted for him. <laughs> That's right. They asked him, how do you feel about abortion? He said, I'm against it. Unless the girl is pregnant. That's another thing. <laughs> I love President Carter. He's such a great man. He knows every issue inside out. He understands it perfectly, and he explains it to you perfectly. The only thing you can't figure out is how come, if he knows everything so well, he can't do nothing about it. <laughs> See, on television every week, explaining to you how he didn't do nothing about something he explained to you last week. <laughs> then he comes back on television telling you he almost did it, but not now. <laughs> then next week, how do you like that? I'm coming close. <laughs> Missed again. <laughs> He's on television every week. He didn't want to be president. He wanted his own show. <laughs> Did you see, did you, hear, did you hear his energy program? Who am I talking to? <laughs> his energy program, Albert Einstein in his best day could never figure out his energy program. Did you hear about it? If you have a small car, you get your money back in taxes if you didn't buy too much gas. But if you bought too much gas, you get half of it back only if you're very poor. If you have a little money, you get a part of it back if the rest of the country didn't use too much. If they use too much gas, you get nothing back on the small car, but you pay more for the big one. <laughs> now, you, if you have solar energy in your house, you pay less taxes on your house, more for the big car, nothing for the small one. And then you have to walk into the streets every day seeing how much gas is being used by whom. <laughs> Let me tell you the truth, compared to this, I love President Ford. Ford didn't get involved with problems. He knew it's none of his business, and he didn't. <laughs> he knew that he didn't get this job to worry about problems. To him, it was problem enough just getting on a plane without an accident. <laughs> and I was raised under Franklin D. Roosevelt when he was president. That man sounded like a president. When he talked, you believed him, even if you didn't know what he was talking about. But you knew this was a president. Did you ever hear Roosevelt talk? I should like to say what I said before. But I should like to say it again and again and again. People ask me why I say again what I said before. I wasn't listening before. <laughs> but you see, Roosevelt and Truman, they proved something in the White House. Roosevelt proved you could spend a lifetime being president then Truman proved that anybody could become president. Now Ford and Carter are proving that we don't need a president. <laughs>